Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the first module of our hands on deep learning course with Python and in this first module the first video was on the basics of deep learning. So we have discussed what is meant by deep learning, what are all the different applications of deep learning, different types of neural networks such as convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks etc. And we have also discussed what are all the different frameworks that we can use to build neural networks. And this is the second video in this module. And in this video, we are going to understand how a neural network works. So let's get started. So we have discussed that deep learning is just a subfield of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks to learn from the data. So we know that in machine learning, we use data and the models of machine learning uses this data to learn from it, right? And when you use spe specific models called as neural network, we call this as a deep learning. And the inspiration of deep learning comes from the biological neurons that we have in our brain and body, right? And this is the representation of how a neural network would look like. So you have input layer, multiple hidden layers, and then you finally have an output layer. This is just an overview of deep learning. Now let's try to dive deep into this. As we said earlier, so you have an input layer and there are several hidden layers. So it can be like you can have two layers, three layers or any number of hidden layers. And finally, you have an output layer. So in this output layer, we feed the data. So if it is an image, so we feed that pixel data to all these neurons in the input layer. And all the processings and calculations kind of happen in the hidden layers. So hidden layers are the ones that do the heavy lifting. So it can be understanding the pattern in the image or detecting the edges of the object present in the image line, etc. Right. So all these things are captured in these hidden layers of the neural network and the output layer gives you the prediction of what that image is. Right. So this is how the architecture of neural network is like. So we have an input layer where we feed the data and a lot of processing uh, and capturing the patterns happen in the hidden layer and finally we have the output layer which gives us the desired predictions right and now let's try to understand what exactly happened within these neurons so let's say that these are all the different layers that we have so here we have one input layer and there are like n number of neurons so all these circles we can call this as neurons so we have like n number of neurons in the input layer and there are let's say six neurons in the first hidden layer and six neurons in the second hidden layer and finally we have three neurons in the output layer. So this three neurons can be used to, you know, uh, this can be used as a classification model that can classify like three uh, objects like present in an image. So this is like one example. So we know that we pass the input data to all the neurons in this input layer. Now this information kind of passes to the neurons of the next layer. So let's try to understand this. So the data or the value from this neuron is fed to the neuron of the next layer. And similarly, this neuron feeds input to all the neurons in the next layer. So this is how it would look like. So we get a value from this first neuron to all the neurons in the next layer. So you can think about this flow given in this direction. So this is how we pass the value or the information to the next layer. So you can see, so all these neurons get input from this first neuron. Similarly, this neuron will also pass the data or the information to the neurons of the next layer, right? So if you take this particular neuron, it will get input from all these neurons. Or in other words, the output of the first layer, this input layer will be the input for the neurons in the next layer similarly in this case as well so all these neurons will get its input from these uh, neurons in the previous layer or in other words i can say the output of the neurons in this layer will be the input of the neurons in this layer right so this is how this work and let's try to understand this with an example so let's say that you have uh, image classification model and let's say we want to classify the image as either a dog or a cat or a horse and let's say this is a sample image and uh, the shape of the image is 200 by 200 so the height of the image is 200 pixel and the width of the image is 200 pixel so the one requirement is that if you want to train a neural network and let's say you're going to pass like uh, 10,000 images to train your neural network. So all these images should be of the same shape. So that is one requirement. So if this is the dimension of the image, 200 and 200, the total number of pixel value will be 40,000. So we just multiply this and we get like 
40,000 pixel. So if you are not very clear about all these things, just search about, uh, you know, how to process image data in neural network. So I have already posted a video on it. So that would give you like a more clear idea. So let's say that we have 40,000 pixel, which is nothing but just a value, right? So pixel is nothing but you can think about it as a, a very small box within that image and each box will have a value right if it is a colored image you have rgb channels if it's a grayscale image you just have a single channel that gives the intensity of uh, white color so that is how things are so let's say that we have this and the total uh, pixel are 40000 now we feed all these 40,000 pixels to our input layer. So you have like these many, uh, you know, neurons in the first layer and we pass like each pixel value to each of these neurons, right? And we know that each of the neuron in this first layer passes on the output or this value to the neurons in the next layer, right? So in this case, now let's take this neuron. So this is the first neuron in my first hidden layer. So these two are my hidden layers. This is my input layer and my output layer, right? So as I said, these three output layer are used to, you know, give predictions for me. So let's say that if this neuron, so all the output that we get from these three neurons will be a probability. So the probability value that we get here basically tells you what's the chance of the image being a dog and the probability value that we get here let's say it's the image what's the chance for the image to be a cat similarly this is the probability of the image being ours right so these are the output neurons now let's come back here and try to understand this so here we have a neuron so if you see this uh, arrows or the directions very closely you can see this particular particular neuron get it gets you know input from all the neurons in the previous uh, you know layer so that means this neuron neuron gets like 40000 values right now let's try to understand how this information or this data is processed in this particular neuron so here each of this value is multiplied with weight Right, so the number of weight is equal to the number of values that you have here. So let's say that x1, x2, x3 are the individual values. So as I said, these are like pixel intensity value. It, the value ranges between 0 and 255. So it can be any values between that. So we take each of this value and multiply it with a corresponding weight. So here we have x1 into w1, which is the value coming from x1, uh, sorry, this neuron. So we multiply it with a weight of w1, and then we multiply x2 with w2, and this goes on until like the last, uh, you know, pixel value. So we have x 39,999 so that is multiplied with the corresponding weight value and then we have the 40,000 uh, you know uh, value and similarly it is multiplied with its corresponding uh, weight value so initially all these weights are randomly generated or we just like generate this with a value zero right so this is how the weight are being generated and then we finally add a bias so bias is just like an offset value so if you know linear regression, it's just like the intercept value that we are adding, right? So it, it is just a single number for this particular neuron. So if you take this neuron, so it gets all these values and then we multiply uh, all those values with the corresponding weight values, right? And now what happens is, so we apply an activation function. So in this neuron, we made this calculation and then we apply this activation function, which can be a sigmoid function or a, you know, a rectified linear unit. So we call this as ReLU or you also have leaky ReLU. So there are like different kinds of this activation functions. It, it basically kind of activates your neuron. If you take a sigmoid neuron, no matter what the value you give to that activation function so you will get values between 0 and 1 so that's how a sigmoid uh, function works similarly you have different kinds of activation function so if the uh, value that you get after applying this activation function is 0 that means this neuron will pass like 0 to the next layer right so if you get 1 or if you get like more than 0.5 it is like 1 right so it kind of we can say that that neuron is being fired right so we say that that neuron is not firing if the value is like 0 so each neuron will do this calculation and apply an activation function to this and again this will be passed on to the next uh, new next uh, neurons in the next layer and this process kind of keeps on happening right and this step is called as forward propagation passing on the values through all the neurons in the all uh, the layers of the network is called as forward propagation so we have this and this flow continues and finally these three neurons uh, make the predictions or give the probability of uh, you know the image being any of these three categories let's say the probability that we got is 0 0.3 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 this means the highest probability that we got is 0 0.5 which is for the second neuron in the output layer and it is a cat so obviously we could see that this is a wrong prediction right now 
you also feed the labels of these images right so as this is a supervised learning approach we feed the images as well as the label in this case we would have filled the label to this network which is basically says that it is a dog so it compares this output a uh, cat which has a probability of 0.5 with the true labels which says dog now we obviously know that this is a wrong prediction now this is uh, this data or the information will be propagated in the backward direction and this is what we call as backward propagation and now what happens is based on the correctness uh, of the prediction that the model has made the weights and bias will be adjusted so this is just for for a single neuron similarly you have all these weights and bias for all the different neurons in the different layers right so all these weights and bias will be adjusted so hence this process is, is we call it as backward propagation right so if you have 10000 images all these 10000 images will be forward propagated and then back propagated based on its prediction and this uh, you know swing of one backward propagation and sorry one forward propagation and backward propagation is what we call as one epoch right i'll repeat this one epoch is nothing but forward propagation of all images and backward propagation of all images so if we have 10 epochs at each of the epoch the weights and bias are being adjusted based on the prediction that we get so this is how a uh, neural network basically works so you have this input layer where you feed all these new all these values and uh, this neuron do some neurons in the first layer do some processing and feed this data to the next layer and then that neuron also do this calculation which is basically uh, you know multiplying it with weight adding the bias applying uh, activation function and passes it to the next uh, layer so once this uh, the forward propagation is completed and then we have a backward propagation that kind of changes uh, or alters this uh, parameter values which are your weights and bias right so this is how basically a neural network works so if you think about a convolutional neural network the uh, working is pretty much same the only difference is that you have uh, different kinds of layers called as convolutional layers so the working of those layers is a bit different but this is like the entire idea of how generally like neural networks work so we will discuss uh, you know cnn in a later part of this course but this is about the working of a neural network so i hope that everyone is clear with this and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching